I hate to be the bearer of bad news, Sami Kirloha, but Roman numerals Volkov is actually very busy at the moment. Oh, rectangular prism, I remember the day I found out Alexis was pregnant with you. In fact, it was one of the worst days of my life. I made a video screaming and crying about it. Why is this happening to me? Because you were a major mistake. And now, here you are, grown, messy, and woohooing your soulmate's younger brother on their living room couch. And the funniest part about all of this is that she enjoyed it thoroughly. All while thinking about Zayden at the same time, she better hope Shanna doesn't find out. Our witchy lesbian wasn't thinking about her brothers or raisin bagels at all. She was thinking about her precious son Sage, because today, they would be having a very important talk. The two of them went to the office. Shanna sat down as she spat the words out. There is a secret that Sage needs to know about their family, a secret that has a lot to do with him. She would like to take him to Glimmerbrook to show him that secret. He couldn't contain his excitement. What could this secret possibly be? Together, they found their way to Glimmerbrook, heading down the path next to Jacob Volkov's cemetery. Sage had never been to Glimmerbrook before, it was so whimsical, filled with beauty, he was in awe of it, it was almost like it was calling his name. Shortly after, was when Shanna reached the portal to the magic realm. She hadn't seen it in so long since she could now teleport to the realm whenever she wanted, she forgot how mythical it looked, she waited for Sage to catch up, and when he saw it, he was taken aback. What was that thing? Shanna looked into her son's beautiful brown eyes and finally explained it to him. He is a spellcaster and he hones the gift to magic abilities just like she does. No way, he's a magician. Well, kind of, and stepping inside this portal will take them to the realm of magic. So, they walked through it. Sage couldn't believe what he was seeing. The grand castle-like building the pink blue green sky, the energy surrounding him, it was overwhelming, but in the best way. Shanna couldn't wait to show him around, but first, she was wondering if he wanted some magical training. Um heck yeah he did. They went through the portal to the battlegrounds, and that's where Shanna got started. The history of spellcasting, how she became one, overcharge risks, and how her love for magic was one of the reasons why he was given his name. She showed him her wand, and how to use it, and explained every rank a spellcaster caster could be, and after Sage had partially absorbed all of that new information, Shanna told him that it was his turn to experiment with his powers. All he has to do is want it, and he could make it happen. He was a bit nervous, and confused by what his mummy meant by want it, but he trusted her. He let himself go, and let himself want the magic. And he did it, just like Shanna said he would. Wow, he was really a magician. Shanna was so proud to see her baby boy immersed in his gift. He'd just learned about spellcasting and was already doing so well. He was confident and focused and eager to learn everything an ideal spellcaster ought to be. She was so excited to show him more eventually in his teen years. After some training, Shanna trusted Sage enough to fly over with her to Caster's Alley via Broom. He was a natural, and she told Sage she was allowing him to buy some items from the vendors. One wand, one familiar, one broom, and a few potion ingredients of his choice. Sage was having the time of his life, learning about his hidden talent. He thanked his amazing mummy for telling him about it and letting him buy some stuff. He promised her that he was going to take this super seriously and would get started on reading about spellcasting the moment they get back home. Once Shanna and Sage were back in Moonwood Mill, Sage was hitting the books and she Shanna was brewing more potions, and our air had reached a major milestone. Sit up, good for you Aurora, now you have a milestone that your sister doesn't. Never mind, you just couldn't let Aurora have her moment, could you Wacy? Oh hey girl, where you going? Playing with your ugly low poly butterfly? Autumn was thrilled to see her babies reaching new milestones. Now Dexter.
I aspire to be this level of petty, well speaking of Dexter, restitution wasn't feeling so great about what she was doing yesterday, she's officially a brother hopper, they played a dangerous game dancing on the living room couch, right in front of the windows, where anyone could see, but that's what made it exciting, the possibility of Zayden walking in on his brother getting wicked with his girl, the hurt look on Zayden's face as Dexter was deep, no, she shouldn't be thinking like that, she loves Zayden, and and she didn't know what the hell she was going to do now. The only thing she hoped was that Shanna would never find out. But enough with Rumble Honey Smith's problems. Look how cute Aurora is putting her foot in her mouth for the first time. And how brotherly Sage is being playful with his sister. Oh, anyways, the twins only had a couple more days until aging up to toddlers and little lesbians. Autumn and Shanna had some milestones they wanted to make sure their babies reach. One of those being trying solid foods for the first time. Autumn did the honors of introducing our heir to apple and pumpkin puree. And she loved it. Autumn loved watching her babies experiment and try new things. But how it made her so sad that they were growing up so fast. Gross, I forgot this sitch is a frequent sneezer. After feeding and burping her, Autumn then gave Aurora a nap in her arms. She was gonna take in as many of these precious moments left as she possibly could. It was Oasis's turn to try solid foods. Girl, why are we upset? Oh for fuck's sake, I'm gonna keep you in that chair out of spite. Look at Sage go, just one day into spellcasting and he's already learned the potion of good fortune. And while Christopher was copying his daughter Autumn, who was partially avoiding him due to what happened with Clint, and giving Wacy a nap in his arms, Red Pepper Flakes had made a decision. She called her boyfriend Zayden Kibo and told him to come over before work, not to break up with him, but rather to apologize to him. And no, not for woohooing his brother. They headed over to Nicole's old bedroom, which River Kilo his aunt had made into her new bedroom, sat down on the bed, and she let it all out. She was sorry, oh my god girl, get it together. Zayden isn't even that cute. She just really hated all this fighting that was going on between them. She loved him so much and didn't want to lose him because of a silly disagreement. The silly disagreement being him not showing up to your mother's funeral. Zayden agreed he hated the fighting and missed her more than anything. I truly cannot stand the two of you. This is exactly what Rain Boots wanted. A fresh start with Zayden. Forget the past. She loves him. He's her soulmate, and she cannot be without him. Things were good with Zayden again. What happened between her and Dexter was a mistake, and she was going to let him know that he had to keep his mouth shut about it. Shantum, why are you dancing like that in front of your children? I am so sorry, you have to witness this aurora. Ah yes, Zenis me go in ham, while Shanna is obliviously making potions in the next room, just a typical night in the Volkov house. After the letdown of a woohoo session, Zayden kissed his woman goodbye. As he now had to leave for work, Rattlesnake cleaned herself up, ate some of Sage's leftover birthday cake, and headed over to Evergreen Harbor for probably the millionth time. But what was different about this visit is that she wasn't coming over to see Zayden, but to see Dexter. I already know this isn't going to go well, Regency Era, who was still in a flirty mood from her time with Zayden, got straight to business with Dexter, what happened yesterday was a huge mistake, he means nothing to her, she is in love with Zayden, and he can never tell him about what the two of them did, Dexter was perplexed, he could not understand why on earth ripe fruits kept defending his brother, he wanted her to get it through her head, he does not love her, he does not care about her, he sees her as a sim, woohoo doll that hates herself so much that she's willing to put up with any of his BS. Red Noise couldn't believe Dexter would stoop so low, but he knew she was stubborn, and someone needed to tell her like it is. Had his brother even taken her out on a proper date, or did he ever bring up 
the idea of marrying her. What if he happened to knock her up? Did he have a game plan for that? The answer was no, because he knows his brother, and his brother doesn't care about her. Robitussin felt so bad after everything Dexter said, he didn't mean to be an asshole, but he didn't think there was any other way to get through to her. When she went into Zayden's bedroom to cry, he followed her in and sat by her side on the bed. Can she look him in the eye and tell him that she has no real feelings for him? Can she look him in the eyes and tell him that the woohoo wasn't amazing? Well, no, recording studio couldn't say that. The woohoo was phenomenal, so wild and full of passion. In fact, she was left a bit disappointed today after the woohoo her and Zayden made. It was always so dull. And that was exactly what Dexter was saying. Rheumatoid arthritis deserved a man that can express to her in every way humanly possible that he loves her and a man that can make her see heaven. So, was it true? Did Ruby's diner not feel anything for Dexter at all? No, that wasn't true. She confessed, she did have feelings for him, and they were strong, but she also loved Zayden. If she could have it her way, she'd have them both. And that's when Dexter made a proposal. Who said Zayden has to know? 